morning. Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm State Representative Greg Meyer. I represent Orange and Durham counties. I'm a former public school employee, and I'm happy to introduce House Bill 1031. House Bill 1031 is the North Carolina Teacher Help Fund. The Help Fund, it would help educators with loan payments. House Bill 1031 appropriates $38.5 million of North Carolina education lottery funds to be used in forgiving outstanding student loans for North Carolina's public school teachers. Public school teachers would be eligible for receiving up to $10,000 in student loan forgiveness under this fund. We had a lottery windfall from the Powerball jackpot in January, and the $38.5 million appropriated by this bill is equivalent to the amount that came from that windfall, which is not already budgeted uh, by the General Assembly. Because that funding would be non-recurring, we were looking for a way that we could support North Carolina public schools with a one-time cash infusion. And we'd like the windfall from the lottery profits to be a jackpot for North Carolina teachers. More than 3,800 teachers would be eligible for this loan forgiveness. Public school teachers and charter school teachers would be eligible. Uh, all teachers who would receive this funding would commit to spending at least four additional years in the classroom. I think at this point I'm going to turn it over to some of my colleagues to talk about why they're supporting, uh, join me in, in uh, sponsoring this bill, and we'll take questions in a few moments. We'll start off with uh, Representative Ed Haynes from Winston-Salem. <coughs> Thank you. Good morning. Happy to be here. Uh, as a <clears throat> former school teacher and uh, North Carolina teacher fellow scholar and uh, the son of, of educators, I'm always happy to, to stand with my colleagues in the General Assembly when it comes to supporting uh, our teachers. Uh, we, we stand be before you again today uh, as a this morning as Democrats, a progressive, from progressives to uh, business moderates to justice driven. Uh, and we proffer a simple question to this state and to our leadership upstairs, and that is why can't we? Uh, why can't we is a question that I've asked many times and one that I asked a lot during my first primary run in 2012. And now approaching my fourth full year in this building, I've come to realize there is absolutely nothing that this assembly uh, can't do if we want to do it. So I ask, why can't we take care of our essential personnel? And I think that's what this bill tries to do. Uh, our, essential, our essential personnel, a portion of whom uh, are our public school teachers. Uh, they're part of our nation's uh, foundation. They're the rock of many of our children's lives. They're often the bridge over the stormy seas that befall many of our brightest public school teachers. And I think my colleagues and I today have presented you a bill where we can uh, take care of, of these teachers. Uh, once again, January uh, record Powerball windfall of $38.5 million uh, came as a result of uh, increased uh, attention to the jackpot as it grew up to close to a billion dollars. We came up with $38.5 million. And so uh, that revenue is not included in our existing budget, but does have to be spent this year. And this bill would put that windfall into the pockets of our teachers. Um, our public school teachers are being financially squeezed at every turn. So while we're working on raises, and we've tried to do that over the last few years, frankly, the raises simply are not coming fast enough. Uh, our teachers and their families need relief, and they need it right now. Uh, so as a member of the lottery committee, I became aware of the windfall and immediately reached out uh, to Representative Myers to discuss the possibilities. And we both really felt like as we looked at this bill, what better way to utilize these funds uh, than to support uh, our essential personnel who work with our children every single day. Uh, and so as we stand here today and as we uh, get this message out across the state, uh, we come right back to this central question. That's why can't we use these funds? to help ease the burden on these public servants. Why can't we use it as an opportunity to unite our state behind what is good, what is right, and that is supporting our teachers. Uh, why can't we take a chance 
of bringing a diverse group, a diverse par party politic to the table and ignore this national political petulance that we see every day that puts us against each other and keeps us from doing uh, the right thing. Uh, so uh, ignoring the plight of our teachers, as far as I'm concerned, is no different than not going to the dentist your entire life. Uh, you won't notice that cavity uh, until you feel the pain. And our teachers are feeling the pain right now. We're going to feel the pain. And we believe right now that we have something we can do to help our teachers, and that is to pass and have you support uh, HB 1031. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Bobby Richardson, and I represent District 7 of the North Carolina General Assembly, which includes territories in Nash County and Franklin County. And I, too, stand with Representative Myers, Haynes, and Salmon to sponsor a bill 10 1031, thank you. <laughs> that when it passed, will it allocate funds to support forgiveness of student loans. I believe in our teachers so much that I agreed to sponsor <coughs> HB 1031. Teachers are North Carolina's greatest resources. They turn the key every day to unlock their talent and ignite the creativity of our state's future leaders. Teachers give of their knowledge, skill set, time, energy, and finance to a greater degree than any other employee in our state. Teachers wear many hats and are many things to many students. If North Carolina wants a brand, I believe that showing unwavering support and respect for our teachers would put North Carolina on the map for economic development. I believe CEOs, when looking for a great school district, when I believe the CEOs are looking for a great school district and a great workforce when they begin to research areas to bring their companies to. North Carolina could be that economic engine if only we would support and bring our teachers up to standards and treat them as professionals. If North Carolina General Assembly would use some of the lottery surplus to forgive teachers student loans, we would show a commitment to our educators that would pay dividends in the future. And when we began to talk about what kind of dollars we're looking at, <coughs> I talked to the UNC system and they gave me a hurried research, but it said that the average four-year teacher degree ends up with about $22,997,000 in student loan. And that is uh, about 1,341 1, students that receive a bachelor's degree that borrows money. So we're not talking about a huge sum of money, but we are talking about lifting our teachers up and also putting our state on the cutting edge of attractions to other companies when they are beginning to look for places to relocate their businesses. Thank you. Uh, good morning, my name is Brad Salmon. I represent the 51st District, uh, which is most of Lee County, a little bit of Harnett County. Uh, you know, this is just important legislation. This, this takes a very strong proactive step to show teachers that we're engaged and we care. I think that it is imperative that we have excellent teachers in the classroom, and I think this will go a long ways to help show our commitment and to to help alleviate some of the debt load burden and perhaps attract better, more qualified folks to want to step up and be in the classroom. Thank you all for being here this morning. I want to make two additional points. One, this type of loan forgiveness is targeted directly at the young teachers who are most likely to leave our profession because of North Carolina's lagging pay. It would be an immediate shot in the arm to help keep someone who's trying to make a tough economic decision about whether or not to stay in North Carolina and how to stay in the teaching profession while raising a family. This could be something that keeps teachers in the schools this year. The second thing I'd like to point out is that the governor's budget proposes using the same $39 million, or his is 39, ours is 38 and a half. The governor's budget proposes using the same lottery funding for textbooks and digital resources. 
That would be a precedent for lottery funding because it would be paying for supplies that we've usually paid for out of the general fund. This fund is more in line with traditional uses of lottery funding to supplement education funding rather than supplanting. We'd be happy to take questions. I, okay, understanding what you've just said about supplementing versus supplanting, you know, yesterday the message that we got was there's not enough money being supplied you know, for textbooks and resources and classroom materials. Why not put this money in and distribute it among school districts to let them catch up with the funding that they say they haven't been getting for those supplies? We, the General Assembly should live up to its obligation to pay for supplies with general fund money. When the North Carolina lottery was introduced, North Carolinians were promised that what they spent on the lottery would supplement education funding, that it wouldn't replace existing funding. And at that time, we were paying for textbooks and digital supplies with general funding. The governor's budget is an admission that the lottery is no longer a supplement to education funding, that it's just another revenue stream that we look at when trying to help figure out how to help pay for schools. Have you talked to anybody in the, the House or Senate leadership, uh, any committee chairs? Uh, is this going to get any traction on the other side? Uh, I have talked to the House Education Appropriation Chairs about the bills, uh, about this bill. They have uh, some things that they're working on already, and this is an idea that I think they're only beginning to explore. I think, Representative Haynes, do you want to speak to that anymore? And that you've had a few conversations? Yeah. I mean, we believe that this is an idea that's worth considering, and if our, uh, our chamber's leaders are serious about taking any good idea from no matter where it comes, then we're welcome to, we would welcome the chance to talk with them further about this bill. Anybody else? So if you want to speak to a uh, school educator who this bill would help, we have somebody who's supposed to be here. She got stuck in the traffic jam where I-40 was closed. She may be here any minute now, but I'd be happy to give you her contact information if anybody wants to follow up with her. And I think we have specific press release with a little more information that Maggie has if anybody wants anything else written down. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.